Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a couple reviews to do for you of some giant mice. I have the Ace Tribeca and the Ace Corta. So these two were sent to me by Giant Mouse. I do have an affiliate link with them. It is down in the description if you want to use that. You can save five bucks on your order using code LEFTYEDC. But just using the link does help the channel if you want to uh, support the channel. Um, they did send these to me for review. They actually accidentally sent two of each, um, which was a fun experience because I opened them all in one video, which you would have seen by now. And the one Tribeca was open, or was it the Corda was open? And so I knew that somebody probably QC checked one set and the other set was just like accidentally sent. So I got one set that was QC checked and one set that was not. And I would say they were all equally as good quality. Like they, they felt good. I mean, centering was slightly off on the Tribeca's, but I actually, uh, since then, earlier today, I just tightened up the uh, pivots on both sides and I got it dead centered. So no issue there. Um, you know, I think the the uh, Cordas might have been the same way, but dead centered on it now because I probably tweaked it. So, uh, you know, they, they came out great and all four of them were. So that's a great sign to me because if you guys were around for the Ace Atelier or Atelier, Atelier or whatever, um, I got four of those because two, the first two were bad QC and the second two were fine you know still had some issues the titanium one had lock stick I had to fix myself but the uh my Carta one was fine I just had to center it up by tightening the pivot so this was a great uh sort of for me it was like a redemption a comeback right they sent me four and they were all good you know so I felt good about that um and their customer service as I've stated previously, is fantastic. So if you have any issues, you reach out to Giant Mouse and they will take care of you, as far as I know. Some people made comments in my Atelier review that I got good customer service because I have a channel and yeah, sure. Um, but I, I would venture to guess their customer service is solid all around. You, you know, Just email them, hit them up on Instagram, do what you gotta do and you should get a good response, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, there's a link down below if you want to uh, pick these or any other giant mice up. They still, I think, have the Ace uh, Atliers. They have, um, I'm pretty sure they, they have like ribs. They have all types of stuff on their website, which is cool. You know, they get a lot of stock. Uh, they order a large quantity. That's how they're able to keep prices down. So they have stuff in stock, um, which is cool. So anyway, the Ace Tribeca. We talked about the uh, blade steel, I believe, uh, already, right? The Magna Cut. I filmed like a five second one before this, and I can't remember if that was where I covered it. But 62 HRC, I'm not gonna go into it because I might have already done that. Um, you have a stonewash blade and black G10 handles with a wire clip and a brass backspacer. I really wish they would go away from these brass backspacers. Um, I don't know if they do it because of cost, like titanium costs more and just doing G10 doesn't look great. So they want to do something. So they do uh, brass instead of like steel, you know, um, I get that. I would just pony up for the titanium or just do a G10 because the weight, I just don't like extra weight on my knife and, and brass does that, you know, it adds extra weight. So um, but I love the wire clip. I did reverse it. Um, we'll talk about it a little more later. You have a pear shaped hole, which is one of my favorite shapes of deployment holes. Um, feel like it's sort of a Vox thing. So I would never do it myself, but, um, you know, I think it looks great. So, uh, overall aesthetically, I think it's a good looking knife. It's, it's sort of a basic bitch, you know? I, I don't mean that in a bad way, but you know, you got a little flipper tab and you got a pear-shaped hole. Um, and then you have a drop point blade with a choil. I mean, it's very, you know, it's very Vox, I guess you could say. 
Um, maybe basic's the wrong word, but it is sort of basic. It's not, I guess it's just not anything crazy, you know, um, or new. It's, it's very in line with his design language, like the, um, what's that knife called? Damn it. It's with the uh, baby core. The core from, uh, Fox is very similar to this. Um, so yeah, um, I like it. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit of girth to it. It's not too thick, but it's a, it's a little bit on the thicker side. Um, it's got a crown spine with a, uh, little bit of jimping up here. It's, it's farther back, I think, than, uh, maybe not. That's right where the hole ends, actually. So it lands in a good spot. So let's talk about ergos. You have this forward choil and another choil right here. So it's very comfortable to grip this knife. And then you land on that jimping right there and you are locked in. Now, I was talking to my buddy Stevie, said Stevie, and he was saying he had an issue with the clip being a hot spot. So I think, because if you look at the wire clip, this is a very good wire clip. It comes down and then it comes up just a little bit and it kind of it flattens out. It's not, you don't feel that at all. But I think what's happening to Stevie is he has big hands. I have a large glove size hand. I think he has like two XL hands or something like that. Um, so when he's gripping it, even choked up, I bet that he's getting drilled by this right in the palm, like right here. If this was hitting me right here, it would be a, ha a hot spot. But for me, that hump lands right at the end. So I don't feel it, right? I just feel the uh, clip right here a little bit and I have no problem with it. Um, you know, if I really squeeze down, yeah, I can feel that little bit, but it's not like getting in my way at all. Um, it feels really comfortable in my hand personally. I have a little bit hanging out. Um, I get a really good grip with that jimping and now I could work with this with the uh, drop point blade and have no problem, right? Um, with the stone wash and the G10, I mean, this thing was meant to be used. They have another version in blue micarta. I'm trying to think of the price point on these. I apologize. I think they might be like 200 bucks, 185, 200 is usually where they are at. The Atliers are a bit more. I think they were 200 and 280. Um, the titania made a, a big difference in price, even though it wasn't milled out. I don't know. It was weird, but it was textured. I don't know. Anyway, I think it's around 200 bucks, and uh, I think it's worth that. I mean, you got Magna Cut Steel, uh, G10, you got a steel liner lock, wire clip, brass backspacer. I mean, it's pretty standard. Um, and it's made in Italy. It's not made in China. You know, the price can come down a little bit if it's made in China. Um, you know, I could probably get this made in China with these materials and have it cost 150 you know, maybe something like that. You can't get Magna Cut, but um, if you did G10 and like S20 or S20V, 20CV, it'd probably be around there, you know, um, maybe less. But anyway, I'm just rambling about that. Price is fine for me. Um, just comes down to if you like the design or not. Um, aesthetics, ergo. So cutting, you have that Magna Cut blade and it, it it's not thin. Um, I'll admit, when it comes down to the edge, it doesn't feel like a lot of knives, here's the uh, Corda even, a lot of knives when you feel it, it comes down to the edge and you kind of feel it like thin out as you come down and that apex feels really good, right? This feels like it just stays kind of uh, thicker throughout. I'm not saying it's chunky, but it's probably, you know, 20 thousandths to 25 thousandths behind the edge, but, a lot of giant mice are meant for, you know, harder use. And I think this is one of them. You have the choil, the G10, the stone wash on the Magna Cut. Why did they choose Magna Cut, right? Well, because it's super tough, holds a good edge and very corrosion resistant. So this can be a great camp knife, outdoor knife, bush crafting knife, not my kind of thing, but I think that's where they were going with this. I bet you, if you watch their marketing on this, it's probably a dude wearing heavy fucking gloves and flicking the knife or whatever and chopping some wood, shaving some wood and then sitting around a fireplace drinking his freshly cooked Joe off the fucking pot. All right. That's probably their marketing for this guy. And that's spot on. That, that makes sense for this knife. So 
There you go. Um, obviously, drop point blade is going to be very versatile. It's probably the most versatile blade shape out there. Uh, you can do a lot of things with it, whether it comes to like kitchen prep or utility cutting. You know, you can do basically anything with a drop point. Um, and it's well done. I mean, it has a good edge on it. Um, I haven't noticed any issues. Now, granted, I haven't put this through the ringer. So definitely check out some other channels if you're looking for heavy duty cut testing. I always recommend Nick Stasa and uh, Jared Neve if that is something you are into. Um, but yeah, so the Tribeca is cool. Uh, we can talk about the um, carry. So you have the clip. I mean, it's standard giant mounts. It's a wire clip mounted close to the end and it's fantastic it slides right into the pocket comes right out of the pocket it, you don't really feel it in there it's not too heavy i mean the brass does add that weight so it's probably a close to five ounce knife if i had to guess you know four and a half i'd say four to five i'll be careful four to five i'm gonna guess on this excuse me um one thing i will note is when i reverse the clip over and I didn't check it beforehand. I didn't carry it right-handed. Did I? I might have for a second, but um, maybe as a backup. But I flipped the clip over and I noticed right away it was kind of tapping. And when I would flip it, it would zing. It would make like a zing noise because the clip was not very tight. It was tapping. So all I did, and this is a trick you can use on basically any knife, as long as it mounts properly, is you just take the clip off. You know, if it's if the clip is mounted weird, then sometimes it doesn't work. But you just take the clip off, right? Turn it around, okay? So face the wire clip this way, and then tighten it back down. So tighten it all the way down with the clip backwards. I know that seems weird, but do it. And make sure it's tight. And then you can just bend down, like be gentle. But all I did was bend it until it hit, it basically hit the G10 here and was like, well, I'm not going any further. So I just gave it a bend and then I flip it back around, tighten it down. And now, I mean, I can't even lift the damn thing off the G10. I might've went too far, but it carries great. I have thinner pants on today, so I might have to readjust it later, but you can always do the same thing. Just flip it around, bend it up a little, you know? Um, just be gentle, small baby steps, guys. I know some of you guys know all this, but like if you're doing it for the first time, don't go too far, you know? Um, you can, you know, you can just go a step at a time and then see where you're at. Keep going. It might take you five minutes, but it's better than taking two minutes and fucking it up. So, um, the carry other than that, which I think is just a simple QC thing. I mean, I'm sure 90% of them have a great clip and this one just got through with a tappy one. Not a big deal. Easy fix. Took me two minutes. Anyway, um, the carry's great in my opinion. The sounds... Now, the, this is stock, <clears throat> so I want to note that, unfortunately, Italy uses brass cage bearings, which is cool, but they use steel balls. Um, I don't know why they're in the Stone Age, but they are, and they use steel balls. At least I'm pretty sure this one has it, because all the previous ones have had it. And so, I will recommend that you take this apart and you put ceramic balls in it. You don't even have to get skiffs. You can just get basic bearings. Like if you ever swapped knives out with skiffs, you probably have some laying around. Just use those. They're usually all Chinese knives like this are gonna come with brass cage ceramic bearings. Makes a big difference, I swear. If you take this knife apart, clean it. That's another thing. Italian knives tend to be dirty inside. They don't clean well before they put them together or as the parts wear, they cause a lot of debris. Where Chinese knives, it seems like they test that or their machining's a little better, so it's cleaner when it, I don't know. But Italian knives tend to need cleaning. So you when you get an Italian knife, I always recommend you take the thing apart, clean it, put in ceramic bearings, and I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. I have not done that with this. So this is stock, okay? Um, and it's pretty good. You know, it's not bad. Now that I have it centered, it's a little tighter than it was out of the box. But, you know, um, 
yeah, I just want to put that out there that I, I bet you this would be way better if I did all that. But I'm just, I didn't do it for the review and I just didn't have the time. Um, so I'll probably get to it later or we'll see what happens. But anyway, um, the sounds. So the sounds are good. I mean, it's standard. You know, I'd give it a six out of 10. It sounds good. Now there is one drawback. It squeaks. <laughs> when you disengage the lock bar, it like squeaks. It's really weird. Um, I don't know if you heard that, but it squeaks like a little mouse. And I'm guessing... Um, actually, I don't know what that would be because they usually use, yeah, they have a nice big white ceramic ball in here as the detent ball, which is ironic, right? They use this amazing detent ball, but then they use fucking steel bearings. It's the strangest thing. But so I'm guessing it's just the bearings in there maybe squeaking because it's metal on metal, you know? It's not, uh, is ceramic metal? I don't think so. Um, but anyway, it's not ceramic on metal, so... Uh, if you took it apart, cleaned it, swapped the bearings, I bet that would go away. Even just cleaning it probably would take it away. So that's the sounds. Uh, action slash fidget factor. So you have some standard giant mouse stuff going on here, right? You have that pear-shaped hole. And the detent on this, fantastic. If you notice, whenever you get a knife from Italy, from giant mouse, that has a hole... Usually the detent will, like, for the most part, they'll be a little lighter than I want, right? But if you get a flipper, they always go strong. They always go real crispy on the detent. Like, remember the Ace Biblios of yesteryear? Man, they would rip your finger off um, trying to flick them. So this is perfect. It's got amazing reverse flick tension. I mean, this is how I would want a reverse flick with no flipper tab. I'm just, that's just how I like, you know, detent strong. So it feels amazing to me. And then the uh, flipper tab, very well done. Some jimping right here, angled down. Really good light switch on that. Push button, just works. Uh, it feels like you might, yeah, you might fail it if you did it too aggressive but if you just do like a light put a push switch like that it works really well and then of course you have the full-on light switch that works great so i think the action's really good it's just you know a little squeaky and it's a little tight and i guarantee you with ceramic bearings it would be fantastic so um yeah i think it's it's great um but you do have that uh classic giant mouse uh, no lock bar access thing going on. I mean, you get like a tiny bit here, but again, it's not the best to just push to the side and have it drop to your nail. You got to go in straight and just push it over and down like this. This is how they want you to disengage their knives. So until hell freezes over, I don't think they're going to change that. All they'd have to do is cut this back a little bit, but they just don't want to do it. I don't know if it's because they think uh, ergonomically, if you're hard using your knife, you might squeeze and disengage it. Could be. Or it's just because they're custom knife makers and this is how they operate their knives. So that's how they're going to make them. And that's fair. That's a fair reason. So that's the Ace Tribeca. I think this is a good knife. Um, I, I do. I think this is a solid one. Again, it comes in denim, I believe, or a blue micarta. It's got like stripes in it, kind of. Uh, I don't know which one I'd like better. I think the black G10 probably. So um, cool knife. Yeah, I'm glad that they came out with this one and uh, I appreciate them sending it my way. So the next one is a bit different. This is the Ace Corta, C-O-R-T-A. Again, I think this one's like 185. Um, Actually, it might be less. No, I think it's like 185. Anyway, uh, this one's going to be M390 and uh, Natural Micarta. This one's made by Riot in China. And as much as I like this, and in the unboxing, I kind of said like, ooh, if I didn't know, you know, the quality, I, I, think, I think it is close. You know what I mean? The designs are different, so it's hard to gauge. You know, the lock bar access, the, the flipper tab... Uh, they're different but this is really well made um you know you can kind of tell that the steel bearings are in there and that's a difference you get here um you can feel a, a smoothness in this that you don't on that when you're just closing it 
and it just feels really, really smooth. And then of course you have that amazing belt satin that Riot does. So those two differences are pretty big, you know. Um, but you know, uh, fit and finish wise, you looking looking at the uh, hardware and the way everything connects, the uh, clips, you know, it's very, very similar. Um, they definitely have a design language and they stick to it, you know. Um, you can obviously see differences, but I think Italy did a really good job. They tend to do, uh, like, if you look at the backspacer, you can see it's kind of crowned, and that's how they make it look a lot cleaner because it's crowned, it pops up a little bit, but it looks good, you know what I mean? Where this, it's all just like perfectly flush, you know? Um, and that just shows Riyadh's skill. Um, I love that like milling or chamfer back here along the backspacer. You see that? That looks awesome to me. Um, just, you know, I'd say it's a, it's a, it's a noticeable step up. Um, so I think I was exaggerating a little bit in the unboxing when I said they were very similar. Um, but you know, I think Italy did a great job, so I don't want to take away from that either. Uh, but anyway, the Corta here is a sweet knife. This is definitely my uh, preferred one out of the two. Um, and I think overall it's it's the design and the the build quality and the, you know, the action and that kind of stuff. But um, both are good. But anyway, this is different. Doesn't have a hole. It's a flipper only knife. And oddly enough it doesn't really bother me because they nailed the flipper i mean it is a very oh shit. it is a very good uh flipper tab and a very good i didn't jack it up at all um very good action it's just riot guys they crush and it it just makes this knife feel really really good um so yeah aesthetically i like it quite a bit they also had a blacked out one in black G10 that looked cool. I just said, send me whatever one. So they sent this one and cool. Um, satin hardware looks really good. And then that belt satin, like I said, um, you have the uh, sort of crown spine. That's another difference, I guess. Um, this is, yeah, I mean, it's way more crown. This is almost like faux crowned. Um, I don't know how to show you better, but it's not very crowned, but it looks, has that appearance where this is definitely all crowned. So, um, you have the same jimping right here. So when you're choked up, boom, you land right there. This one does not have a forward finger choil, but it might as well. I mean, the, the flipper tab for me operates like one, you know, if you had huge hands, maybe not. You'd be cramped back here. I can just fit all four, but this feels really comfortable to me, and that's how I would use it. I don't really need to make hard use cuts, so I wouldn't be worried about you know cutting myself, but I can bear down pretty hard. I don't feel anything, so. Um, yeah, ergonomics are really good. The flipper tab's really good ergonomically. Um, it's got a little bit of a poke here, a little bit of a sharp corner, but they did just knock off the corner. You, you're not gonna be able to see it with this front camera, but they just knocked this corner off. So unlike say a sharp by design where it's sharp, it's not, you just, it, it feels really good. The jimping catches you and you can feel a little bit of pressure from it, but not enough to make it bother you. So you can push button, you can light switch, you know, you can uh, push switch, you can do whatever you want and it, it all works really freaking well. Um, the detents I think broke in really nicely in the unboxing. I think I was saying like, they're good, but they could be stronger or whatever. Nah, this is perfect. Literally perfect. Break detent, it flies out, locks up, just break it. I mean, it's like hard to just break it. You know, it's easier to just go for it. So that's the sign of a good detent to me is where you want to just go for it. You don't want to sit there and pussyfoot it to see how good it is all the time. You know, you're just confident in that detent and you pop it, you know. Um, the blade on this feels nice and thin. This one's going to be, you know, around 15, probably thousands. I'd say 15 to 17 with my finger calipers. Um, so really solid there. You have an inset liner lock. 
Um, I don't know if it's steel or titanium on the liner. I would venture to guess that it's titanium based off of how it feels and looks and all of that stuff. Um, I don't know if I have a magnet in here. Let me see. I think I do, yeah. Forgot I put one of these in the truck. I have one of these uh, extendable magnets. You guys need to get one of these. They're on Amazon. They're in the description of every video in my disassembly tools. Um, it's great. It's just a magnet on a freaking extendable pen. And it comes in handy for this or when you drop something between your seats, you can just go get it. Uh, but let's see. Oh no, that's steel. Okay, they went with a steel liner. That'll save you some money, um, which is good because honestly, I don't notice a difference between this and say the uh, Luft Avant or the F5.5. Um, it's a thin liner and it's steel, but it's, you know, it's very thin, so it doesn't add a ton of weight and it keeps their costs down. So honestly, 185 bucks or whatever, and you get the same feel. I, I mean, and it's steel, so you don't have to worry about it having lock stick issues as much, right? You don't have to carbonize it. So I think that's a smart choice here, honestly. Um, yeah, so cutting is good. I didn't do a ton with it, but you have a good penetrating tip here. Um, and then you have a nice, you know, you have nice belly here. You don't have any straight edge, but because of that tip, I can just go bang and utility cut. It's it's low enough for me, honestly. Um, you do have the bat, brass backspacer on here, but somehow this thing still feels relatively light. Where this one, I guess they're about the same, but for some reason, this one like just feels chunkier, heavier to me. I don't know why that is. Um, and this one's definitely a steel liner. You can just tell on that. Oops. So uh, size-wise, we can look at both of them. Giant mouse size, which is uh, usually like a just under three inch blade probably is what I'm guessing. But I don't know, these do feel a little bigger. But I'm guessing it's around a three inch blade. This one might be a little longer. I don't know. Do I have anything I can measure with? Let's see. Does the fulcrum have a ruler on it? That would be smart to put on there. Uh. Nope, I don't have anything. Sorry guys. But here's a fulcrum, which I believe is five inches overall, maybe five and a half. So you still got a bit of ways there. I don't know, that doesn't help me at all. I'm just gonna stop thinking about it. You can just look the specs up. It feels good in the hand. So um, my guess is it's right around that three inch mark on the blade. Um, but yeah, so cutting uh, carry is just as good. You have the wire clip. This one I carried uh, more. I carried this one like three or four days. And the clip is great, the tension's great. Just went right in my pocket, came right out. You have a deeper carry on this one versus the Tribeca. Not that I need to compare these, but a little bit deeper carry. Clip is the same design. Um, it is that giant mouse clip. So I think Lynch sells uh, a specific clip for them. Um, sounds. Very good. It's got that really crisp, just Riot has a good way of detents closing. Listen, just snicks in. That's like one of my favorite things. And um, yeah, it just sounds good. I give this one a, a seven out of 10. Um, action slash fidget factor. The detent, like I said, is money. Flipper tab is money. And I haven't taken this apart. I'm sure I could clean it, skiff it, and probably get it to drop shut more, but as is, it's not very drop shut. 
it has no play because I tightened it up to center it and everything, but it's very smooth. So hard to gauge. I'm guessing skiffs and some lube and whatnot would uh, help it, but I mean, it's, it's very good. It's just not a guillotine, you know? It's also a light blade because you have a lot of blade that gets cut off for this tip. You know, there's not a lot of weight out to the tip and that's what causes a good drop shut action in a lot of cases. You know, you can do it other ways, but knives that have thickness out here is what helps them swing down. An example would be like the Devo Stout. That one has a good, um, there's a lot of meat at the end of that knife. So it wants to pendulum swing that puppy down, but it's fantastic. Uh, overall, this knife is really good. Um, you know, I think it's, I prefer it out of the two, even though this one has a deployment hole, I just like it aesthetically and the feel of it. I just prefer a Riot build over Italy. You know, uh, they did a good job here, guys. Italy did a great job here, but it's still not a Riot or, you know, a QSP or a Best Tech. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I hate to say it because I know a lot of people are, are anti-Chinese knives and whatnot, but, like, I'm all about the quality. And, you know, you can get more for less from China. So it's like, mm, I wish they would start using China for everything. But I think they're smart because they have those people who won't buy Chinese knives and then they will buy their Italian ones, you know, so I get it. But that Tribeca made by Riot would be off the chain. You know what I mean? This thing would be like uh, similar to an F5. I mean, it would be killer. It's really good as is, but it would be a killer by Riot. I said the same thing about the Ace Allier. So anyway, uh, really digging both of them. Uh, this one's been out for a while. So thank you to GM or Giant Mouse for sending them. This is the one that uh, they just released. So. If you're interested, go pick it up. Link down below. Use code LEFTYEDC for five bones off. And uh, yeah, see, it's already like smoothing out even more just the more I flick it. But it could have loosened up a little bit. No, oh, it's good. All right, you guys let me know which one you like. Let me know your preferences. Let me know if you prefer Italy or China. Uh, let me know what you think about Magna Cut on this knife. And uh Give Giant Mouse a shout out for me for sending these my way. And, uh, you know, I'll figure out what I do with them. Definitely giving away at least the Corda and probably the Tribeca once it comes back. And we'll see what I end up doing with these two. And, uh, yeah, love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.